Well, Steve White, Steve Arts 89. Well, everyone's talking about the Joker. It's a huge issue at the moment. How did this happen? Everybody hates it. The fans hate it. The studios hate it. The critics hate it. Everyone hates it. It's failed at the box office. It cost over $200 million, um, $190 million production, and then the promotion. Um, and it's made less than half of what was projected, and half of the projection was half of what the original film made. So it's a huge flop. How did this happen? Well, they gave Todd Phillips complete creative control. He didn't have to answer to the studios. He didn't have to answer to the producers. He didn't have to take notes. He got final cut, and he didn't have to screen the film for anyone. That is a very dangerous thing to do for a studio, but they did it because they trusted him because the first film was great, it made a million, made a billion dollars, and they just said, okay, we trust you to give us another one, here's your money, do your magic. And he knew that he wasn't going to give them the film they were asking for. He deliberately went in the opposite direction because he didn't like the way the first film was received. Some people got what he was talking about, like I did, and appreciated it, respected it, and didn't see the Joker as a hero, didn't, didn't elevate them. But then the incels, um, the maggots, basically engaged in this film like they kind of did with Top Gun, um, the, 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 the sequel. They said, this is for us, support this film. They basically elevated him to a hero, and Todd Phillips hated that. Um, now... I think there was a general audience as well who, who kind of came to the party and was just like, was like, oh, this is how the Joker started, and they kind of wanted to see the Joker be the Joker and be the bad guy, and I guess eventually get taken down by Batman. So there was, there was a mix of people, the people who got it, the people who really didn't get it, and I think they were the ones who gave the film ultimately its box office. Um, but then along comes, you know, the big, you know, box office hit and everything and they're like okay we need another one and Todd agreed to do it but he knew he wasn't going to give them what they wanted and I do think that is wrong I think they should literally sue him because they basically paid him to do something and he just deliberately did the opposite and didn't tell them he didn't say I don't want to do this film I want to do a film that um, deconstructs that character and absolutely gives the middle finger to that audience because I, I think those people are just insane and wrong and I hate how they, you know, re received my film and how they elevated it and elevated that character when they shouldn't have. He didn't, he didn't tell them that's what they were doing. There's no way the studio said, yep, here's your $190 million and here's all your publicity money and everything. Um, make this film that's going to slap the audience that gave us a billion dollars in the face. Yep, no way that happened. They had no idea what he was doing. Um, they should have worked out what, they, what I was doing, but they're studio executives. They just know money. He made them the money, they gave him more money to make them more money. And he said he would, and he didn't. He knew what he was doing, that's wrong. So he's in the wrong professionally, and I don't think he should ever work in Hollywood again. No one should ever hire him because, well, no one should ever give him credit control again. Um, that was just a mistake. So that's that side of it. The other side, so far as... Um, this sequel, people wanted one of three things. The people who got the first film wanted more of an exploration of Arthur Fleck and what, um, you know, we do, what, what, what the sort of the, the maggots and, and the incels do with, with the, that sort of character and how they elevate them and, and that, that, the sickness of that. We did get that. But the incels didn't get their, you know, Joker romancing Harley Quinn and going on a crime spree. Um, because they think he's a hero. They didn't get that. And the general audience didn't get their Bonnie and Clyde, you know, Joker and Harley Quinn, you know, having a romance and running amok and then getting taken down by the Batman. That's what the general audience wanted. So we've got three audiences and no one got what they wanted, really. I mean, I think the people who got the first film got a little bit of that, but they didn't really get what they want either. So no one really got what they wanted. The film on that level failed, but it didn't fail because that's what he intended to do but that's not what he was paid to do. So it's a huge mess, um, and it's really risky to give a filmmaker complete creative control. They did that, um, last time I heard of that happening was David Lynch with Twin Peaks, um, season three. Basically the return, which is what he turned it into. They wanted season three of Twin Peaks, a fan wanted season three of Twin Peaks. He wouldn't do it because he wanted to do um, a David Lynch film set in the Twin Peaks universe. So he walked away. 
they didn't think the fans would accept it without him. They basically gave him freedom, and he basically made an eight-part David Lynch film set in the Twin Peaks universe, but not Twin Peaks Season 3. We got Twin Peaks The Return, which was not Twin Peaks Season 3. And that was a slap in the face of the fans, a slap in the face of the studios. But at least we kind of knew that's what he was going to do. But um, Todd Phillips, I don't think the Warner Brothers, the studio, whoever, had any idea what he was going to do. They basically paid him to create another Joker film, and they thought he would deliver, and he didn't, and it was deliberate. So yeah, I, I really think he's at fault here. Um, if he'd been honest about what he wanted to do, and they paid him to do that, because artistically they thought it was sound, and morally they thought it was sound, then that's okay. But that's not what happened. They gave him money to make a Joker sequel for that audience that gave them a billion dollars, and he deliberately did not do that. 